What's going on, everybody? It's Nick Costco with On3 Sports. It's May. It's spring. We're into the spring sports season, but wrestling news just never stops. The transfer portal is finally closed, so if you got in before the deadline, you are eligible for the upcoming season. Now that the deadline has passed, we're going to see a lot less influx, and I believe as of now, as I'm recording this on May 3rd, this should be the end of what you see or, or who you see pop up in the portal based on compliance offices getting up to that. I think, it, I think it's up to 48 hours to make sure that uh, their entries are reflected in the database. So transit portal matters is pretty much almost over, but there are still some guys who are in the portal that have yet to make commitments. And of course, there's some other news going on in the world of college wrestling. We'll start with Carter Starachi. He's back for his fifth and final season of varsity wrestling for Penn State. He announced the other day that he would be coming back now. He was granted the extra year of eligibility because of the COVID year when he won his first national title. That was his first year in the lineup back in 2021. It was always going to be a free year. And then I think people were even talking about this back in 2021, or at least you had a thought in your head of, if this guy is, really is that good, he has the opportunity to win five national titles. Now, that's never been done. And if it is done by Sirachi this upcoming season, it likely will never, ever be matched. Because, again, how do you win five national titles unless there's another global pandemic or something wacky comes out of out of the woodwork where a guy is granted five years of actual varsity eligibility? So, uh, Starachi's back. It's really no big surprise. you got to imagine the NIL deals were flowing in. He'll be paid handsomely, so to speak. That's just my educated guess with the way college athletics works, as we know, as we track it, of course, at on three and, of course, in our NIL space as well, but Sirachi, I'm sure, is going to get well compensated for this final season. Uh, it's a matter of where he's going to go now because the, the Penn State lineup does have questions. Uh, I don't think Greg Kirkvliet, at least at, upon first inspection, has announced whether he's coming back or not. He has the opportunity to come back for next year as Penn State's heavyweight. I don't think he announced it yet. I think that they are leaning that he would come back, though. Uh, that seems to be the projection that he is going to be back at heavyweight. But Starachi's placement in the lineup now begs the question of, all right, he just won four national titles at 174 pounds. He wrestled at 86 kilos at the Olympic trials, wrestled rather well, uh, as I might say, with a bum knee, essentially. And, of course, he won his national title essentially on one leg and was just stout defensively the entire time and still got through his attacks. But because he went 86 kilos, he's well into the 180s right there. Could he go back to 174 next year? Yes, of course he can. I'm sure he can make the cut. Does he want to make the cut? Probably not. And he did tease, and I believe he told Flow Wrestling this, among other uh, outlets out of the Olympic trials. He teased that he could go 197 next year and just take the spot of Aaron Brooks, who, again, another four-time NCAA champion, and he'll actually be representing 86 kilos at the Paris Olympics this summer for Team USA, beating David Taylor, the reigning gold medalist. Uh, from the United States. So Brooks isn't, again, Brooks isn't coming back, but you could see Starachi bump to 84. You could see him go 97. And, you know, why not jump up two weight classes? If he's already walking around towards that weight, he'd be the favorite of 197. I could see it. Uh, but if he goes up a weight class, it does reopen some spots. And there's going to be a lot of lineup questions. I know there's talk about, uh, you look at Levi Haynes and Mitchell Messenbrink at 57 and 65. Do those guys actually swap weights next year? Uh, 174 reopens if Starachi does not go that way. Alex Facundo took the Olympic redshirt this year. He's an excellent, excellent wrestler. And I'll tell you what, he might be in the run. He'll be on the short list for, for a national title at 174. He is that good as a redshirt sophomore going into next season. But if Starachi does go up, that means Facundo could slide right into that spot. Remember, he was a national qualifier in 2023, took the Olympic redshirt this past year. So He's obviously jumped levels uh, in the year since, so he slides right in right there. And then, of course, you have the redshirt freshman, Josh Barr, a much-anticipated debut in the varsity lineup next year. That could be a big possibility at 184. And again, that puts Starachi up at 197. And that looks like the most likely lineup for next year. Uh, it's it's tough to tell how else they would balance it out. They, they do have a bunch of depth. That, and they have a lot of depth, of course, and – you know, you look at 197, you know, Lucas Cochran uh, is a steady backup. It was a steady backup to Aaron Brooks, and obviously we saw him above the heavyweight, and he beat an All-American in uh, uh, 
Yaroslav Slavakusi in the duel against Rutgers. So Cochran's a great option, 197. But of course, if Starachi's going to go 97, you're going to put Starachi, the four time champion, going for his fifth national title in at that weight. The Mirror Solas are in next year at 197 and heavyweight, respectively. So I would imagine Kale wants to get them a red shirt year, prepare them, uh, you know, sitting behind Starachi and Kirkvid, hypothetically, this coming season, and then get them in for the 25 26 campaign. So that seems to make the most sense. We look at it on paper. And I'm, I'm scrolling through Russell Stats uh, projected lineup as well. Of course, you know they, they have a bunch of questions down low as well as far as who's going to go, what weight, who's going to redshirt, who's going to come back into the lineup. I know there's a big question of Tyler Kasak. He'll probably end up redshirting next year as Shane Van Ness returns from injury at 149. So they're going to be loaded once again. Bo Bartlett said he's coming back as well. So you know they're gonna they're, they're essentially going to run it back in 2025 and if Starachi uh ends up going up to 197 probably the best move for him and the lineup and again wherever he goes 74 84 97 he's going to be the national title favorite he's going to try to make history again he joined his teammate Aaron Brooks in becoming a four-time national champion that's a rare class of its own and of course Starachi you know he was granted the opportunity to do so so you might as well, you might as well take advantage of it no one can ever eat Equal this down the line. Again, granted, something freaky happens in terms of eligibility, but Sirachi surely going to be the favorite, and it's going to be one of the biggest storylines to watch next season as he goes for a fifth national title. I'm looking forward to it. I would love to see it just for history purposes. It's awesome to see. I'm glad he is going for it rather than just saying, you know what, I'm going to take my four years and, and that's it. I know he teased that, but I think in the back of his head, he probably always thought, I'm going to try to do something that no one else could ever possibly do in the history of this sport maybe we'll never have even have the opportunity to do so so let me take my chance and do that so he's back 197 seems to be the possibility for 2025 for carter sirachi uh looking forward to it that's gonna be a big one uh some other names that were into the transfer portal uh chris cannon entered it so he spent one year at michigan this past season wrestled just one match had an injury and then dylan Raggison, who was supposed to red shirt last year 133 ended up taking that spot and of course Raggison ended up finishing fifth in the NCAA tournament. But I guess with Raggison, he burnt the red shirt. You would imagine if Cannon was able to come back this year, he was part of the uh, grad transfer class uh, coming in to Michigan last year. Him, Michael D'Augustino, Lucas Davison, all from Northwestern, Shane Griffith from Stanford, all came in, all there to bolster the lineup, of course. Didn't really miss a beat with Ragusett in there because they were, you know, they wanted to redshirt him. He's a veteran. They knew he could be this good, uh, but they wanted to give Cannon the shot there and give Ragusett a year to just basically level up his wrestling unattached and come back for 2025. And I guess the expectation was that if Cannon was going to be missing for, or missed the entire season, Ragusett would redshirt for 2025, and then Cannon would go back in at 133. But that does not seem to be the case. Again, if you enter the portal, does not mean he's automatically leaving the school, but it appears that he is bound to leave. He entered with a do not contact designation, so he has an idea of where he wants to go. That means don't reach out to me. You know, If you're coaches that are not on his list or schools that are not on his list, he's basically saying don't reach out to me. I guess he has an idea of where he wants to go. Again, he's from Northwestern. Uh, he, he has that connection with Blair, uh, so the Jeff Buxton. So nat naturally, Rutgers, who was in on him, Last year, so to speak, or it was a possible destination. I know that, that that's been teased as a possibility, but I honestly have no idea where he's going to go. You also have to factor in the fact that uh, Andrew Alirez is, is in the portal, the former national champion from Northern Colorado, probably going 141 once again. Iowa is the rumored destination there. I, I have no idea where Cannon would want to go. He was at 133. Chris Cannon was. There was talk of that maybe he would go up to 141. I don't know if he actually will do that. So hypothetically, from a Rutgers standpoint, you look at 133, Dylan Shaver's got the spot, All-American this past year. He's going to be a contender for the national title next year. You go to 141, Rutgers does graduate Mitch Moore. Joey Oliveri is supposed to go back in there after a red shirt year. That's the projections right now when we're talking about a year out from the next season. So could he bump up? Sure. Does Rutgers make sense from that perspective? It can, and again, it looks, and at least what Russell Stats projecting, uh, can it would go 141 next year. He started his career at 125, but he's been a 33-pounder his whole career. Uh, you know, Two-time All-American. Any school would be lucky to have him. Again, I'm just, just, just unsure where he's going to go. Uh, 
Uh, but again, do not contact designation. He has an idea of where he wants to go. I'm sure he, he probably has a list of, I'm just going to take a wild guess and say he has a list of three, four schools, maybe five schools that he narrowed it down to. Again, he has one more year of eligibility, but whoever gets him is going to get a two-time All-American and certainly a contender for the podium once again in 2025. Uh, the last topic I wanted to hit on, and it kind of went under the radar because he is not a perennial starter. He's a career backup, and he's a utility man. But Terrell Bearclaw from Penn State, Utah native, was at Penn State for, I believe, five years, I want to say. I got to double-check that. But he was a, as, solid, as, as solid of a backup as you could ask for if you're talking about guys who just were all about the team and just wanted to make sure that they – Got the job done. Hard worker. Uh, let's see. He was there for five seasons. Five seasons. So he was 49 early on, 57. And then this past year was bounced around between 65 and 174. Mostly 165. So he's a middleweight guy. Now, I, I heard Utah Valley was thrown out there just based on him going back closer to home. Would be a logical fit. But I think Bear Claw is going to have his pick at the litter because he's, con he's considered an All-American candidate. At 65 or 74, it seems like he'll go 65 next year, but no, really no spot for him at Penn State anymore. Wants to take his final year of eligibility elsewhere. Don't blame him. I'm sure Penn State fans were very pleased with his performances over the course of his career. Went 12 and 2 this past season. His only losses this year were to his own teammate, Mitchell Messenbrink. Lost to him 8 to 5 of the Black Knight Invitational. And he also lost to Shane Griffith, who we know, former national champion. And of course, uh, five time All American lost to him two to one in that duel against Michigan. So, Bear Claw, again, you're wrestling two of the best guys in the country. Other than that, he beat everybody else and won pretty handily this past year. Uh, he won uh, six out of his 12 matches were by bonus points. So, very high quality wrestler in the portal. So, we're going to take a look and see where Cannon and Bear Claw are going to end up going. We know the big news is Starachi coming back. It just means Penn State's reloaded once again. They're going to essentially run it back only without. Uh, Bernie Truax and Aaron Brooks. <laughs> Again, Aaron Brooks, fourth-time national champion. Big shoes to fill, but Starachi goes right in there at 197, supposedly. And then we'll see where Cannon goes. Do not contact. So he's probably narrowed down to a couple schools. Bear Claw. Again, no idea where he would go. Utah Valley makes sense from a going back home perspective. Those, that's just off the top of my head. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait till this stuff starts trickling out over the next couple of weeks. And again, they don't have to be in a rush to make a decision. You have to enter the portal by that deadline, but there's no deadline on making a decision. I guess it just has to work out academically and, of course, by an, enro an, an enrollment deadline at a school. So they had they do have plenty of time, so I'm sure we're going to see this process play out. So two, guys, two, viable, more, uh, two more viable guys in the portal, a two-time All-American, and, of course, an All-American candidate in the portal as well. So that's going to do it for me for this time around. More wrestling news will come around the corner. I'm sure we'll be here to cover it at On3. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at NickCosco59. Follow On3 on all social media handles. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video and the channel as well. And go to On3's YouTube and subscribe to the channel as well. So I'm Nick Costco saying so long for more college wrestling news. Be sure to keep it up to date on Twitter and follow On3.